That's right. Yes, it's true. It's real. It's Greasy Conversation Time. The talk show on RadioVegas.rocks. Be sure and mention RadioVegas.rocks with all of the sponsors that we talk about today and uh, holler at them about it. Say it to their face. Make eye contact. Call all the phone numbers and at least chat for a second. It counts even if you don't like do anything with them. Anyway, today we've got a super bonus special episode with Ange Kerfoot. Yay. It's true. <laughs> Hello. Yep. She, she's just finishing up hollering at Instagram real quick. I'm back on yeah. the saddle again. Holler at the gram. I'm back. I'm back. What you doing, Graham? Get to work. Posting. What you doing, Graham? Should be posting right now. I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying. Get that, get that media in while we're doing media. It's media on media. It's media on <laughs> media. If you didn't hear that, it's media on media. media also, on media. headphones on headphones. Because... <laughs> There's two different varieties of kicker headphones in the studio today. There's a new uh, fellow that they've got that has this metal situation on the side. Kicker headphones, if you didn't already know, is our official headphone sponsor. And they just re-upped this studio. So this studio is decked out. And there's two different flavors. Uh, the tabers go around your ear more. Uh, and then these this newer, thinner fellow, I, I dare compare them to beats ballpark for much less you still have the same metal construction and uh, increased bass response on these fellas bluetooth no trebly stuff no trebly stuff not here all right you guys the, that's the submarine <laughs> of knowledge preparing us for all of our underwater knowledge <laughs> I don't know. The first thing might not be underwater at all. It's, I, it, oh, no. It's not, it's not going <laughs> to be voice. All right. So, you know, we hear a lot of complaints about the government that it's uh, not always run efficiently, this and that. But it's good to know that our government does have a seven-step plan for what they plan to do when and if we make contacts with extraterrestrials. Because they've been kind of coming back in the popular discussion because the raid on area because we 51. totally know uh how they would respond uh <laughs> i know right how can well, we that's plan like, this without knowing <laughs> yeah well that's why first step do research covert spy research send in some james bonds you know some, some james bonds a little uh, 007 action <laughs> just dress them up as the alien you know just send them out in the ship be like oh sorry guys i got lost you know no, they just do, like, uh, just drone reconnaissance. Drone uh, up these fellas? Yeah, see if you know. I have a plan in case they land. <laughs> <laughs> Party. Party. That's plan number one. Party with them. Yeah. Oh, all right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I right? bet they can just, like, party without any kind of chemicals or so evolved. They're just like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just concentrated they just, like, party they just, Yeah, they just know, like, what, what weed's like. Right away, <laughs> they're like, "Oh yeah, we have we have stuff like my this." My Facebook post going on too. That space Come weed. On. Hey, uh, shout out to Damon who's already hollering in the chat. Uh, Damon, Aww. Damon Reader. So I mean, it's it's pretty standard stuff, but it's funny. This this article is hilarious because under each section, you know, it's a uh, start. You know, getting a little co closer, probing, make sure they're not a threat, all this type of stuff. You know, try to make contact. But like each one of, of these headlines is a, a picture. I don't know if you can grab it, Waz. Yeah, just yeah, from, yeah. Just from some like movie with extraterrestrials in it. I've got the the first questions, fella. First. But it's just fun. Yeah. Like they throw in. It, it just gets want, like progressively. Could scarier. do a demo video for them, like the one when you're like learning at a new job, how they like give a demonstration video. So we'll, like have that prepared and then like show them that to kind of cue them. <laughs> cue the person. Yeah. Like like an eighties like work <laughs> safety. Like in <laughs> the aliens, we have in the example video look like nothing like them, and they get just a like a cheap headband with like the antenna sticking out or whatever, <laughs> just like. Big black alien shades. Yeah, One dude's like wearing it. like a Halloween costume of an oak tree. <laughs> just like flailing. You don't know how many limbs they'll have. Right. Just like, there's just like 20 different costumes just in case. Like it's a different <laughs> alien each scene. I, that would be great though. Have It's like a, 
just those really bad like 80s just work training <laughs> training videos you know or it's just some guy always with like the mustache the like you know that guy with the that that caterpillar mustache I keep just, having just flashbacks of like bedside manner videos from nursing school right now. <laughs> yeah, it'd be something like that, yeah. But oh, yes, even though they have a plan, ready. they'll still bungle it up. So it doesn't matter, you know. Shout out to XT Dream hollering in the Twitch. Hey, XT what's Dreams, up? yo, what up, dog? I'm, a, I'm always following your work. Long time, you got nerve. I long love time no see, dog. Yeah, definite friend of the family and. Also appreciate giving some love to the Twitch. That's a new avenue. Uh, also, it's oh, difficult Twitch. to get subs over on YouTube. So holler yeah, at us over there. Yeah, yell at people about Twitch, man. Like, just yell at people. And it's everywhere. <laughs> yeah. And uh, if you get a moment, review us on iTunes. iTunes is a place that getting a review there is tricky to do, especially if we don't holler or remind you at you. And uh, thanks for your patience. Getting rolling. Uh, getting into alien procedures. What's another fellow here? Um, well, besides that, it's, uh, let's see. Next, we'd start getting a little closer. Then we would make sure they're not a threat. That's kind of vague. It's probably worded better in the government yeah, writings about it. Yeah, because, like, we would know if they were a threat pretty, like, if they came here with the intent to, like, take our resources, <laughs> like, none of, none of this is going to happen. And it's, you know, it's just, like, defense mode right away. But if, like, they were a threat like does it matter yeah it's, it's like if over. we know yeah like they can just they can just like travel across the universe yeah or galaxy maybe not the universe but they probably that would be sick though they probably have resources our planet has uh on a lot of rocky bodies a lot closer to them mm -hmm. all the good shit we've pretty much mined it already i think we yeah that's true we're already trying to go to asteroids uh japan's la landing on an asteroid right now to look at what we could do as far as mining that action. Maybe they want, maybe it's like Soylent Green. Or no, not the, there was like, uh, not Soylent Green. It's like a twi old Twilight Zone episode where the aliens uh, come to Earth and they like help, help everyone out, like uh, great, just advanced medical care, like heal all diseases and stuff and give people a book. And, and they finally translate it. And the, the title is To Serve Mankind, right? Uh -huh. And then so at the end of the episode, they're like, any humans who want to volunteer to come back to our world, it's like a paradise, blah, 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 they can come. So they load up the ship with all these humans. And this guy or this chick's been working on crack translating this book, you know, and then the, the line at the end was like, wait, don't go. It's a cookbook. Or something <laughs> like that. You know? So, yeah. Oh, awesome. When like Twilight Zones were just like 30 minute jokes with like the one punchline at the end. <laughs> yeah that's not I, I mean i thought they were a little traumatic then and now black mirror is a thing black mirror kind of oh yeah like, black mirror is like damn this delicious dude did you see the new season just real did you guys see the new season of black mirror yes the, oh, yeah. the first episode was like out there man yeah <laughs> but it was really interesting uh I don't know. It, it was just it was <laughs> yeah. Just I don't crazy. want to spoil too much. Yeah, I don't want to like delve into spoiler time, but yeah, I watch it. It's just it asks some interesting questions about relationships. Oh yeah. Silence. <laughs> right. Well, hey, I think that um, uh, at least a, a break from the alien procedure time, we should now that we've gotten going, totally say hey to our guest. <laughs> This is Ange Kerfoot. We just released an album, or it's in pre-release status. You can get it early at Bandcamp uh, before before the streamy people get a chance to try it out on Spotify and stuff. Oh, you yeah. You can Bandcamp at first. It's called Into the Whatever. Into the Whatever. It's also, uh, you can find it link in bio, of course. Check out uh, greasyconversation.com for anything that we mentioned today. If you go to this episode's little post, you'll see that these very same show notes that we're scrolling through in the episode, you can party on with these notes too. Uh, go to these things, check out stuff, secret bonus Easter eggs in there that we didn't even bring if up in forget, the show. If you forget, you can just ask us on the internet. Yeah. yeah. Preferably in the comment section. Anything, <laughs> <laughs> ask us as many See things as you want. a lot of good want. shit. Right there. Ask multiple times, it all helps the algorithms. But uh, also, Angie's got some other crazy plans going on. I do. We want to holler There's at the a, top. Um, this, there's a step it's called the Stella throwdown it's at rebar uh, August 17th which is next Saturday 
a uh, bunch of really great local artists. Roy, uh, Roy Thomas, uh, Jim Jacks is going to be there. Uh, Alexander Sky is going to be there. And Stella has sponsored. Uh, they're going to battle for an hour. Uh, they're doing a painting. They have one hour to do a painting, and Sweet. it's a contest, but it's all um, really seasoned uh, artists, so um, it'll be really interesting to see what they do on the fly, since most of them would spend more time than that. Uh, and uh, there's going to be specials on Stella, which you don't hear very often. And yeah, yep, oh, it's yeah. at Rebar. It's at 8. I think the actual battle starts at, like, 8.39, but it's next Saturday at 8 o'clock at Rebar. The Stella Throwdown. Sweet. Yeah, see, this is Oh, yeah, I'm emceeing. Oh, the, the MC facilitation <laughs> yeah. will be occurring by this and person. And I don't MC a lot, so uh, Phil Kotler from Bleach and a million other things. Uh, Phil has agreed <sighs> to give me a little coaching sesh tomorrow, which I'm extremely stoked about. Uh, so uh, we'll we'll see how that goes. I'm sure I will have been better for it. <laughs> yeah, shout out to Phil. <laughs> Phil's the man. Thanks, Phil Kotler. So also Kyle, B genius, hollering yeah. in the chat. Yeah, genius. My guru. You guys stole him away from me. No, go. <laughs> he's the one. He's one of a couple people, but he's Very the main honest. one that that suggested we bump up to OBS, start showing you the news on the screen. I'm still waiting for him to make me a beat. I know it doesn't work that way, but I keep dreaming. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we, I think, have got this format situation today at a new peak, slid into some easygoing alien stuff. Yeah. While while people start to roll their way in in the beginning, there's always people coming in the door as things get started, and then we hit them with our main plug from our guests before anyone gets a chance to run off. And now it's party <laughs> time into the first quarter of the situation. Yeah. Okay. Was there anything else you saw in this alien threat thing that's like, I feel like this is something we could come back to later, like a callback -y. Yeah, I mean, it just seems like a... Uh Standard government plan for anything. It's one of those longer read articles that's worth. Yeah, it's worth diving into from our news docs uh, as something you can take away for more fun later. I'm a little aliened out right now. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, yeah. I know I submitted that article, so it's my fault. But <laughs> yeah. TikTok, all right. <laughs> that's another good point. Uh, we bring this up every time, but this particular show, particular was extra full of Angie's journalism. Woo. She's our crack correspondent. I wanted to put out a bunch of depressing shit, but Wes says it wasn't right for this show, so this is what I came up with. I know, I usually do enough of that, so. <laughs> right? Yeah, I have to do a little vetting. You don't need, like, double, you don't need double duty on that one. You're like, oh, yeah, there's 50 articles about serial Guys, there's killers. only so dark we can go. Turn up the light. Yeah, right. Oh, wow, everyone died? <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> Seriously, though, it's like around half our articles, a lot of these episodes are. are no accidental the death and dismemberment articles, guys. <laughs> God. Right. I guess that this will be, this might be as gruesome as we go. I don't know. Some uh, oh. woman was visiting her parents' yeah. grave in, in Long Island. Yeah. And then a, <laughs> a sinkhole opened up, like, on the grave and sucked her in there. She was okay though. She survived, but it's yeah. It's a she trip. had like some minor injuries, I think. What a trip though! Would I'd be like, I mean, yo, that's... I've lost a parent. And I know how hard it is. So that side of that is very serious and not funny. But uh, on a real note, uh, she did get to live, and that would like that would fuck me up. Like that would change the way I thought. Like I don't know that. And honestly, unfortunately, that would make me start believing in ghosts and bullshit like that. So <laughs> right? I kind of feel bad for her on this whole other mental level. I would become the most angry atheist. If that happened to me, I would say, oh, man. I would feel like the devil is trying to get me or some shit. They're, like, pulling me down. <laughs> yeah, what do you call it if you just believe in only the devil? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like reverse theist, anti-theist. I'm trying to think of what you call it. Yeah, I mean, if she's, like, a... Uh... She's a huge horror fan if she thought it, it was kill like... Feather next I was just going to say... So, yeah, there's a kill feather tombstone. Kevin, don't go. No, right. Kevin. Yeah, this is this is old. Thomas F. Yeah, Kevin what Kilfeather at Hollow, previous guest, uh, appeared on this season even. Um, yeah. A lot of good stuff on this season, fellas. Oh, yeah. So, cool. yeah, sucked into your parents' grave. Like, this is one of the coolest sets of words I've ever read, as tragic as it was yeah. for her. Like, I feel like that's the next Death Cab album. That would just trip me out so bad. <laughs> yeah. I'd sue about it. If she, I if might she stay hurt. in there, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I guess I'll live here now. Yeah, as long as she lived through it, that's just a really cool thing to say you've gotten to do. Like, I got to be sucked into my parents' you grave. freak out a lot of your friends. <laughs> All right. Oh, hey. 
Check it out. That's not it. There's more. It'll do. All right. Our good buddy, Clavino da Silva, a Brazilian inmate. Yes. Uh, <laughs> this is a good one. Yeah. He, it, he attempted to escape prison disguised as his daughter. And uh, I don't think they don't have the image up here anymore. It was like a uh, video. While she was visiting. And yeah, his yeah, plan yeah. was, I mean, he he did a damn good job of disguising himself, first of all. But it's his legit. plan was to actually, this is messed up, to swap out and have her stay. I'm sure he had some plan like, oh, I'll come and get you out. Yeah, uh, yeah. Anyways, I don't know if you did the follow up on this guy, but uh, well, I'll let, uh, he ended up committing suicide. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Supposedly. Bummer. However, you know, he had a, he made a lot of enemies. Yeah, he did have a lot of enemies so, in you know. prison, so. But yeah. the disguise was on point. What they the only reason they busted him is because his body language, his demeanor, he seemed nervous. That's why he got busted. Here we go. Here we go. Look at oh, this. Oh yeah, it's, oh, found it's it? a mac. Yeah. It's pretty damn good. It, yeah. It's better than even like you know that fetish where the guys wear the masks and everything. Have you seen that yet? I gotta I catch. You. I gotta have. catch you up. It's Not on yet. Vice. It's on <laughs> Vice. These German guys and they, uh, they just like to. It, this this is one of those masks. It's 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 as legit as you could get in a in a skin mask. You yeah, like they'll dress like an anime uh, chick. Can we show him a close up? Oh, for sure. Where uh, these? He was a little guy too, so. So it worked out. Yeah. Very short little guy. I was watching one thing. It's and so it's pretty damn good, really. I thought I was looking at a girl wearing an anime mask. Look how look how legit. <laughs> and it was honestly. Not. <laughs> damn, was that legit though? Oh, here it comes. Thanks, Fox. Here we go. Anyway, that's as big as we can get. Anyways, into that I have for now. so many questions. I wish I could be a fly on the wall because I just want to know. I just have so many questions, and and I, it's so wrong. That, like his hope. I mean, he was not a good good person. I know. No, no, I know no. that. You know. But, but this part was pretty clever. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He sure. nailed it. <laughs> what Almost was, like some other guys that tried to like. Okay. Okay. I got it, guys. You know, like the old. Uh, just in like the old TV shows where they're going to bust someone out of prison. So they like bring him some food, like a cake or something, you know, and there's like a lock pick in the cake. Mm. You know, they're like, all right, guys, all right, bake me a cake. And then inside the cake, put a, a giant cake costume. I know. <laughs> I'm going to dress up as the cake and then just, just get rejected out of prison because they're like, no food. What's this guy doing with a cake? How did, how did his daughter get it in? Because uh, don't they check your bags when you go to visit? I, mean, I would think so. Yeah, I, they I should. Just, I yeah. mean, but where was this again? Uh, Brazil? Brazil, yeah. Yeah, I mean, whatever. So, who knows? I always wondered why they Casey bake. need a plan. Like, mm -mm. Why a nail file in the cake when something like a hacksaw blade would be the same size and thinner? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we don't want you to get out in a hurry. We don't want to help you get out. Yeah, you got to show that determination. <laughs> you no one it. gets out of jail without determination, all right? <laughs> Can't just get out easy. I almost, there's, there's something twisted about me that kind of wishes he would have made it just because it's a trip. Okay, I'm glad I'm not the first person to say <laughs> this because I definitely have been thinking that. Like but and, and, and how it. is he going to leave his daughter in there if he's in male population? That I mean, that's another good question. I know. Where does the daughter go that he's looking like? <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. All of a sudden you're you're 25 years younger, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> you plus you're leaving your daughter in a prison to probably get murdered or it it, it yeah, at best right. at best. Yeah. <laughs> she puts on a disguise to look at him, as him to serve the rest of his sentence. So she gets like shit. <laughs> <laughs> like the next Ooh, day she just gets shit. Oh, uh, you got Bloody a Mary. pickle in your belly, Bloody Mary? Oh, yes. Yeah. For the audio listeners, there's a pickle in the Bloody Mary. That's the and it one. traveled in this. <laughs> but I wonder if... <laughs> this whistling so can. Do you think people jar. like sneak into prison to like assassinate <laughs> prisoners? Hmm. There definitely are cases of people that have committed a crime uh, to go to the same jail in that particular county to then assassinate someone. Oh, wow. That's definitely a thing. Hmm. Not that I have like any good time. proof or reference never, of it. I'm just but you would sure. like never know if if like someone just snuck into prison dressed up as a, like a guard or something, and they just went and killed someone and then snuck out. And they're like, oh, just killed by a prisoner. Oh, half the time I bet the guards would be in on it and be like, well, this is a prisoner we wanted to get rid of anyway. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. Fucking well, prisons, man. Is, if that's enough for this fella, then. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, call it good on that. All right, now this shit tripped me out. The I've, tale of that one. I've, I've heard some shit. 
All right. All right. So kids, and where is this? In Indonesia, are collecting pads and tampons. Oh no. Yes. Sorry guys, but I had to bring this one in. And, yeah. And boiling them, and then drinking the resulting liquid. To Not to mention that supposedly high. some of them are used. Ugh. According to that's, uh, but it's just the chlorine in the tampon that's Could actually just left that part right out. Yeah, I know. I think the article probably put that in there for kicks, but I'm just saying. I've got a few holes to poke in this. Uh, first of all, <laughs> this is all right. like the New York Post, uh, barely editing and kind of. I know they're bullshit. Re- yeah, <laughs> they're trashy. They're fun, of, fun headlines though. They get yeah, super yeah. fun. They're one of my favorites for the fun headlines, oh, yeah. but they kind of reposted this from uh, the Daily Mail, which is even sketchier, and just like, uh, there's like layers of interpretation of what they're getting from this. Because if if a tampon had enough chlorine in it for you to get high off of water boiling off of it, first chlorine boils before water does. You can leave a a bottle out with chlorine in it and it'll evaporate out. Shit's ratchet. Yeah, Yeah, and we would would all be fucked up in our pools if this was how chlorine worked. Mental. But I think- I think that they're getting high on uh, stem cells from the menstrual blood. <laughs> well, they Waz not... thinks it's like um, it's uh, it's it's a, just a turn on. That too, for sure. Because I I was a teenage boy, and there's something fucked up about it. Just doing it is like just you know absurd. So it's like yeah, like super you said. gross and absurd now. But there was a time when just a lady putting a wallet, my wallet, between her breasts, <laughs> and then it wasn't me. No, this was like a high school move for sure. Like, uh, we called it blessing it, and it would imbue, imbue a scent. For it only lasted a few minutes. The, mm-hmm. the smell. It was just like a, it was probably just perfume. It probably wasn't. But I think that there's a gland there, and there's some kind of pheromone thing happening. That sounds pretty common. Right. Okay. Sorry, uh, Dad. No, I appreciate the val- <laughs> appreciate the validation on this. It's a little. It's a. It's an awkward thing Anyways, to bring up from the don't, past. We don't recommend it. No. <laughs> I know this graphic too. This Photoshop they have, like it's a cocktail. Like these kids are right. like a, a little weenie on a st- on a yeah. single. Yeah. <laughs> like these kids are sticking half a lime on the edge of the glass. Right. No, and it's, it's probably bullshit. You know, I understand it's like it's gotta be layers of it. Being a teenager, like hearing things that you have around your house that can get you high, and being like, huh, and none of them work, and so you learn after the first one. Yeah. What What are some of? And I'm sure we all heard like stupid, stupid shit in high school. Did you guys ever hear, like, the Black Widow? You smoke a Black Widow? I haven't heard that one. I've heard bananas. Okay. Banana peels? Yeah. You got to get that banana I just dream. went straight to trying out a duster. <laughs> I really did. Yeah. The first time I tried it, uh, and the only time, actually, the jungle immediately appeared around me. It's the only oh, time like I've the ever seen air. a jungle. Yeah. It was pretty amazing. I would not recommend <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was sure. 17. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, no, I've yeah, seen the jungle. I've had like I've multiple people <laughs> when I was like in high school tell me that uh, smoke a, if you smoke a black widow, that's it'll, really cool. It'll be like poor uh, psychedelic or some shit. Do you try it? Hell no. <laughs> yeah, I like that you said poor thing. That's what I was thinking too, man. Like, who's, there's Ouch. a victim here. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what? if anyone would actually have excited. There was other stuff too. What else can we think of that was like. Yeah, the bana- like know. you dry bananas, you mash them, and then you bake it forever, and then you scrape it up. Like the whole process is just ridiculous. I just have to say, these kids that are taking like a, a, a unused tampon and boiling that, they're fakers. These kids, <laughs> oh, are, no. those kids are full of garbage. They're just they're they're uh, plants from the tampon industry trying to get this <laughs> nation. Because isn't it like shills, a- shills for big tampon? Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, they're trying tampons. Indonesia. Indonesian's tampon market is is fixed. Tampons right. can just fuck off all around. <laughs> yeah, toxic shock. Pad it up, right? Are we are we pad people? Like I have any say. They're safer. At all. <laughs> no <laughs> say. Right. The real quick back to banana peels. Real quick. Oh yeah, yeah. The craziest thing was like all the variations. Like yeah, and it, and it just became more elaborate. Mm. Oh, you I, weren't doing it right, bro. I think the yeah. most the most elaborate one I heard was. So you had to take the banana peel, then you choose chew a piece of spearmint gum. <laughs> you put the spearmint gum in the banana peel and you like close it up and then you rubber band the end rubber band the end of it and then you let it sit outside for like a month. <laughs> Cuz that the mold it's supposed to be the same kind of mold. Good lord. Like LSA, which is similar to 
LSD kind of and is like you get it from morning glory seeds you have to like boil yeah, yeah. and process morning glory yeah. seeds nightshade um, plant seeds and uh it seems but, like yeah. it'd be easy to mess up and make poison I'd Probably, be afraid yeah. of that like it's, instead of it yeah. not working it works but for death <laughs> like, right. what <laughs> never mind experimenting with to uh, create medicine let's just uh, <laughs> what a heavy disappointment <laughs> after that get, process trying to get <laughs> fucked up yo Trying to get that banana peel fucked up. You know what I'm saying? What about catnip? I, apparently, you can smoke catnip. Uh, that's just that. I mean, I'm sure it? you could. I've never heard of it working. What about kratom? Can you smoke kratom? Smoking kratom, I, I bet don't know. You, I, I yeah. bet you there's like a issue where too high a temperature burns off the gladness. The active chemicals. Yeah, I've done like key bumps of kratom before. Yeah, you're telling me that it has to burn. Oh man, you guys, we just had a crazy blast from my past in the chat paul writing aka ghetto timmy is in the house hey what's up this awesome dude in my high school uh was a little bit younger than me and i was just feeling really antsy and crazy and giving people nicknames all the time and he was one of my success stories of someone i gave the nickname in this case ghetto timmy to <laughs> but what makes what makes it great is he's is he really, okay with that Yes, because if you met he him, he's so humor. great sense of humor and really <laughs> dignified. The kind of person that would just approach you in a non-ghetto way every time. Perfect. Yeah. And so That's you couldn't, stuck. Yeah, it would never work derogatorily because it just would always seem ironic immediately on meeting him. And uh, I'd like to say he met, I hope he met a bunch of people through that. That was my intention. <laughs> I'd, I'd never demean with my nicknames. But that's that was my, my I'm, I was wondering how you're doing, Get it, Timmy. Good to see you. This one's for you. This sound effect. Get ready. This one. That's that's your slam. That's your slam today. <laughs> Holler in the chat. Who, anyone else that needs a slam today? We're handing out slams. All right, I think it's uh it's time about time to pay some of them Bob Thorntons. Yeah, we gotta mm -hmm. get our Bob Thorntons paid. Them uh, S Preston Esquires. Yeah. <laughs> Engage. Are you looking for that afternoon pick-me-up? Well, there's the energy drink way, but you're not a fan of all the sugar or the hard crash. Well, then you need Zip Fizz All Natural Energy. That's right. Add it to your bottle of water, and soon you'll be replenished with four to six hours of all natural energy. Zip Fizz Energy. No sudden crash, 10 calorie. Low carb, vitamin B. The healthy energy mix. Zip Fizz. Zip Fizz .com. Albo Pizza, our mission is to bring a menu of savory Italian classics and tasty American fare to the city of Las Vegas. Combining a classic menu of Italian favorites and American fare, Albo Pizza was designed with a variety of palates in mind. United by fresh ingredients prepared daily, all our recipes are homemade, hand-tossed, and hard to resist. Explore their popular pizza offerings or branch out with our burgers and chicken wings. Whichever way you go, their menu is prepared to please. Located at 1510 South Las Vegas Boulevard next to Dino's. Visit them online at www.albopizzalv.com or find them on Facebook. For delivery, call 702-333-2526. Have you been thinking about taking an Alaskan vacation? Well, now you can book an Alaskan cruise tour with YMT Vacations and immediately save $250 per person. Call YMT Vacations today. We've been helping people take the vacation of a lifetime for over 50 years. And right now, if you've been thinking about what it would be like to go on an Alaskan cruise, now with our $250 per person instant rebate is the perfect time. Call right now for details. And if Alaska isn't on your bucket list, List. We've got over 50 guided tours to different locations worldwide. Call right now for your free brochure. So if you're looking for the perfect cruise tour to Alaska or the perfect guided vacation package, you need to call YMT Vacations to book right now or for our free brochure. 800-213-9256. 800-213-9256. 800 That's 800-213-9256. Hey, Radio Vegas Rocks listeners, it's your favorite troll maker, Sober Sal, from the Not Playing Stupid Podcast. 
I'm headed to Summer Meltdown this weekend to partay. And do you think this is dinner has time to sober up or take a shower to that four-day music festival? No, ain't gonna happen. The cool things I don't need to. I got dude wipes. Dude wipes aren't your typical ass wipes. Dude wipes are made from plant-based fibers and are actually certified as flushable. Not only are dude wipes alcohol fragrance free, they're also lined with aloe and vitamin E to ensure your anus is so heinous. So go to dudeproducts.com and use checkout code SHARTWEEK and you can receive additional 15% off your entire order. Someone has to take care of your ass. It might as well be you. Come on, dude. Take it to the hole. Hey everyone, it's your buddy Crazy J back again to tell you about Angel Wax. We've been telling you about it for a while now. This product is absolutely amazing. Our boy Tommy Davis, the man behind Angel Wax, he has been working hard for you. He has been on tour, he has been traveling, he's done car shows, he's done conventions. He is spreading the gospel of Angel Wax and it's working. A lot of people are getting into it, they love it. Those car enthusiasts that are spending their weekends detailing it like crazy, love it. If you want to outshine the rest of the cars on the road, the best way to do that is by getting some angel wax let tommy davis know that radio vegas.rocks sent you to him to try this amazing product angel wax get in on it today do you fear the dark do you fear the light are you afraid of what you've seen are you afraid of what you can't see? What responses, you, you say you're testing it at the house, uh, what, what responses did you get when you were uh, testing it? Uh, I mean, I've heard my full name, Chris's name, uh, just direct re replies to questions and stuff. On World Ghost Radio, the paranormal, the spirits, the unexplainable, with your host, Rocky, on World Ghost Radio. Welcome back, everyone. It's Greasy Conversation, which has a website of the same name for which you can get the very articles we're reading now. And we are on RadioVegas.rocks. Be sure and check out the schedule page on radio RadioVegas.rocks, the site, and Check out some of the other rad shows we've got going on. Lizzie Minx from Pet Tigers Yay, has a show. It's my girl. Yeah, called Mixtape. Also, Faded and Elevated with Jordan. Jordan, my other girl. Ah, killer shows. Great places to discover stuff. Can't leave out Pulsar, too, if we're talking about Discovery Time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, some highlights to check out, of course. The Rocking Comedy Show, if you've never checked out the home base show that started it all before this was even a station. That's where the OGs live. Uh, as well as Casey Jetson is co-hosting over there with DJ Fade, and it's just like my favorite version of the rock and comedy show yet. But now we're back, and it's spider time. One second, I just lost my. Uh... You lost your spider hour. Seriously, Greg? It's okay. I did. I I've got know. it. I don't know where it went. Because <laughs> spiders eat up to 800 million tons. That whole ton. Um, um, not a million of them, but 800 of those millions of tons of prey a year. That's how much weight of stuff that goes inside a spider. No issues with digestion there at all. Nah, they're good no, at it. Not at all. They take their time even. So apparently, these billions of spiders, they could eat all of us in one year, if given the chance, if we if they let want our guard well, What if... are they waiting for? Yeah. We're buddies right now. We're fucking waiting, man. Our garbage That's what gives we them... think. <laughs> this fucking ended all. As long as we keep making flies from our garbage, we're on their side. Yeah, we should be buddies with spiders. I mean, they're yeah. they're cool little cool little dudes. I fuck with spiders like, for sure. <laughs> try to give them like a little hand bump when you see one, man. Don't like step oh, yeah. on them. If we had a little daddy long legs in the corner of the shower, and I'm like, I was kind of sad. I noticed recently he was gone. I'm like, well, we are not good enough for him, or? Oh, he left a note. I forgot to oh. tell you. <laughs> Did he? <laughs> we're just getting to know each other. I just like all the headlines in this article are great just from the first one and then spiders are everywhere and are watching you right now <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they really get what they're looking at though like a dog handshake the dog doesn't really know what the handshake really means is he eating a chrysalis right there no, no, no. He wrapped it up in his whole... Uh... Oh, duh. Okay. It does look like a chrysalis. Yeah. It's Maybe going he wrapped inside it up of Damn, that's gangster. <laughs> Spiders are gangster as fuck, dude. Toss me one of those chrysalis, bro. <laughs> yeah, just 
cracking a cold one with the boys. Mm-hmm. Oh man, <laughs> crack a cold chrysalis. Man. Yeah, go make friends with spiders, man. They're cool little dudes. Make a friend. Uh, rose hair tarantula, if you're looking for a pet spider, that is a, a breed that actually works well as a pet. They're, they're about fist size, and they're really docile. Uh, when you see back in the 90s on TV, there was a couple of these, like, watch a person do a crazy stunt thing, and uh, one of the things would be someone would put a spider in their mouth and then blow bubbles with a spider in their mouth. It was always this breed. Okay. Uh, the thing I'm is, more of a beta person myself. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's more of a real pet. The spider mm-hmm. is just a, a prisoner. I'd let it go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, but these, they're, they're a form of trapdoor spider. So they normally prey by digging a hole and just uh, uh, hiding in it to catch prey. These guys are the laziest form of trapdoor spider. All they do in the wild is just leave web all over the ground it's oh. just a sticky thing for bugs to walk into, and then they take their time and go over there. They don't even climb anywhere to make a web. Wow. So they're like the, how lazy. Yeah, they're the cows of the spider world. <laughs> Pink knees are a little bit smaller, and they're really popular, too, for your pet spider guide. That's your takeaway today. Yeah. Go adopt all the spiders. Adopt them. Adopt <laughs> a spider today. Don't uh, waste your money they on these They won't take any more at the NSPCA. I tried. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, plus you don't, when there's all these homeless spiders, you don't want to just be breeding more or contributing to the spider overpopulation problem. Or do problem. you? <laughs> <laughs> Trying long, to wipe out the population, you might want to breed more spiders. Well, as long as they spay and neuter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, that'd be a great job. There's <laughs> 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 a microscope. <laughs> all right. Well, I guess they'd be, uh, I guess they'd be sedated, so... <laughs> oh yeah, they're, they're spider chill. sedation. Yeah, <laughs> spray them down real quick with some, uh, you know, whatever it is. <laughs> that spider laughing gas. Yeah, that's available in stores. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. But wait, so what's next? All right, this, this fucking lady. Uh, from New Hampshire. <laughs> that's suspense. Yeah. Okay, I can work with New Who Hampshire. Tried to frame her neighbor for assault. And used fake vampire blood. I saw that. And makeup to make like bone, uh, just make it look like she'd been attacked. What a premeditation. Yeah, <laughs> to try to like frame her neighbor, but using like Halloween vampire blood. Hmm. So well, unfortunately, my... they don't have any pictures of her uh, Doing as, the she, framing. as she claimed to have been attacked. Yeah. They found a lot of searches for. <laughs> What were her internet searches for this like, I wonder? Right? Yeah, she just had just like a makeup, black eye, bloody nose, uh, red stains on her shirt. Man. She's been I'm just watching saying, too much TV. Right. <laughs> some From people, the 80s. <laughs> some people's faces, you know when you stretch a picture out sideways? Or, or, or like you don't resize a picture the right way and it yeah. ends up stretched sideways or up and down. Some people look like the pictures stretch sideways when they're just like not. It's like a real picture. Like the yeah. like I'm doubting yeah. the Some calibration. Some people are just stretch sideways though too. Yeah, I think she's a sideways stretchy person. Tragically, not that that's an excuse. Yeah, it's definitely just one of the worst uh, attempted framings yeah. of all time for sure. So how was it determined Which that this... Which is good if you, if you want to look at it that way, but... <laughs> how did we determine this fake blood is vampire blood, specifically? Did they find, like, the package? Or they did. It... In fact, <laughs> <laughs> after police searched her... That's so embarrassing. Uh, ...apartment, they determined it was fluid not consistent with blood, and then they found a plastic tube of... And I quote, vampire blood commonly used at Halloween. <laughs> Okay. So yeah, she was she was actually charged with falsifying physical evidence and giving a false report to law enforcement. Well, you got to start somewhere with the knowledge, I guess. Right. <laughs> Better luck next time. Better luck next time. Wait, you mean I just can't make shit up to try to get someone arrested? <laughs> the fuck is this? This is not what I had in to? mind at all. This yeah. was gonna work out. It's fucking deep state. <laughs> all right. What's your next fella? Wait. <clears throat> There you go. <laughs> that was enough for that one. Yeah, this one is interesting. In New Zealand, they found a fossil of the largest parrot 
Oh, and cool. first species of extinct Fucking giant parrot to be discovered anywhere ever. Awesome. Wow. It was, it's estimated to have been a meter tall. Cool. Called Heracles in a, in You could ride it. Cool. Aw. Yeah. Found in New Zealand, but. It looks like it has a soft neck. Wow. <laughs> Man, that would be pretty scary. It's a pretty cool looking bird. For the audio people, this parrot looks like it indeed has a very soft neck. It looks so not tropical, which is interesting about it's it. It's almost it looks like foresty. A yeah. <laughs> it's got like fall colors instead of the Can we get colors. one? Um, <laughs> right. Yeah. Damn. Cool. Man, that's a garage parrot, they call cutie. it. Oh, that's, that's like above oh, my waist height. Basketball. Is that like, do you like extra scroll because you're nervous or? Yeah, what is I that? totally Don't do did that. some extra nervous <laughs> scrolling. Okay. You caught me. Am I making you nervous? <laughs> no, it's this fluffy bird It's that can claw my neck inside. Because it looks friendly here, but that beak, that's like a neck beak, a neck chomper. Oh, yeah. It must eat seeds from like these gigantic dinosaur trees that we don't have anymore. Chomp a tree trunk in half or some <laughs> shit. Yo, imagine like running into that shit in the forest. I just get right, on it and start riding existed. it and make friends with it. <laughs> Sometimes just like Polly want a cracker. <laughs> like, oh shit. <laughs> Sometimes I think uh, when I scroll and there's no other cool pictures in the article, that if I scroll again, another picture will appear <laughs> that wasn't there the first time. Like there's some tricks these articles want to play. They're, they're not playing. Tricks. Never, yeah, never but happens. Unless it's those giant pop up in front of everything. Hey, subscribe right away before we give you any more content. Oh, I hate those, man. Do you want to let this website notify you for the rest of your life whenever you're doing anything? No. Oh, yeah, totally. <laughs> Do you want the app that goes with this parrot so you can <laughs> see this parrot anytime? Do you want the giant parrot app? Yeah. <laughs> Do you want this parrot to notify you? And do you want your driving directions to be spoken by this parrot? Aww. No. Yes. <laughs> no. Yes. No. <laughs> the parrot just repeats them four times every time. Turn so. right. Turn right. <laughs> turn right. Man, we always oh, bring the bird news, you guys. I know. I saw this. This lady has a cockatoo. Uh, I forget his name right now. Buddy the cockatoo. Anyways, uh, she takes him to In-N-Out, and he really likes french fries and when they're in line he bobs and he's like potato potato <laughs> oh my god that's that hilarious so adorable. you have to see it if you look up cockatoo who likes potatoes he will come up oh nice i was at the he's bank famous. once and this guy had a parrot on his shoulder at the bank and he was sitting with a teller and arguing was with it them. henry <laughs> i don't know oh, no henry i know what you mean yeah shout out to henry um no, this person, I, I was really concerned that the parrot was going to, like, attack the teller in his honor or something, <laughs> the way this altercation was occurring. You don't expect someone that can maintain a bird on their shoulder to have, like, aggression. <laughs> <laughs> it's a weird experience. All right, Greg, All right. what you've got? Hold on. Let's, let's see what the whistling train of, uh, that brings news brings. You can hear Dark Souls in it. Yeah, that one is pretty dark. Yeah. All right, so this one is... It's another New York Post article, but it's really funny. It doesn't seem like it would be made up. It's just about how apparently hedgehogs <laughs> uh, are pretty rowdy. Oh, when, this is awesome. Ange fine. This when they're getting crazy. on. I did not know it was called a carousel when hedgehogs <laughs> do it. Man, I wish my lovemaking was compared to a carousel. There's all kinds of things going up and down everywhere. and People. Uh, I feel like I should comment here, or maybe I shouldn't. I just don't even know. I'm running out of parallels besides the. <laughs> besides Anyways. The Oops, people again. Oh, here, here's some more, more hog time. Hedgehog uh, porn, basically. Yeah, and it, it just. Well, and the article is just about how uh, a groundskeeper kept searching for, uh, it says for hooligans who had been tripping the security sen sensors and it, it turns out it wasn't hooligans, it was just hedgehogs in heat. Yeah, and I was looking up more about these hedgehog carousels. They were very excited hedgehogs. Yeah, these little fellows, people say they really sound like people sometimes Aww, if you haven't heard a he hedgehog go. before. Oh, it's like a fluffy egg, but pokey fluffy. Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> 
But yeah, apparently, like, it's, like, people screaming and waking up the neighbors with this party they put down. Yeah, they make a lot of dis- uh, distressing noises, apparently. Sometimes scream. they say, <laughs> from purring to snarling to whistling and even scream-like sounds. They're very free. Which have been <laughs> mistaken for distressed humans in the past. Oh. Yeah, they're Strange. sex positive. They're Crazy. open. They're that loud, huh? Yeah. Well, good yeah. for them. I mean, you know. <laughs> yeah. Way to live. Live your life. <laughs> Living their best lives, I guess, <laughs> for hedgehogs. Right. All right. Well this done. is. They're this... mesmerizing. I was getting in there too. Yeah. I know, right? They're Sorry, so audio cool. listeners. They're, they're hedgehog like lay on their great. back and just like you just poke their little bellies like the uh, Pillsbury Doughboy. That's how I like, imagine them too. Dough hogs. Dough hogs. Wait, what about this? You, what is this NOS commercial? I freaking love NOS. That's why I, I just I keep seeing it when I'm like on YouTube late at night, stoned. I like their And marketing. for some reason, it is the funniest fucking thing to me. I don't know why. It's pretty stupid. So for the audio listeners, like there's like there's video listeners. Well, I guess you could be. You can peep over the video, but I haven't seen anything but like a Camaro and smoke and light behind a guy, yeah. and suddenly he's running. Is he uh, and he? Night you rider. see his mouth yell and and uh, glass breaks. Now he's dove into the front of the car and just kicks. This is his a car's represent- butt. representation of how your anxiety feels on it. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you could just take on the front of a Camaro and yeah, you just go head first into a speeding Camaro. I don't know. I just like it. Just seems so silly to me. I like it. I thought it was pretty cool. But I just see it all the time now. I like their graphic. And I'm like this shit. Too. This fucking nos. These I'm a guys. nos fan. They're baller. It can get edgy, though, when you get to that Camaro crushing moment. Yeah. I think it's time to dial it back a bit. When there's property damage involved, you've had a little too much time. I know, right? So time yeah. and a plea. <laughs> like, just, man. That's, commercials are great, though. I, I like commercials a lot more than, or more than a lot of TV, actually. Yeah. Just because they're so silly, and you're like, wait. They, I don't know. Co- commercials are fucking bizarre to me. But <laughs> anyway. Oh, should we go down the simulator hole? Can we oh, play the simulator? We've, we've got to go to Simulator Town eventually. So uh, why don't you pull up? Um, I don't know what you'd pull up. Let's go to that part in the notes. Holler at them what we have so far. I'll bring up the suggestions that came in on the socials. Yeah, so the the idea for this was just, you know, we have the, the simulator games. Some of them are useful, like airplane simulators, which you can actually learn to, like, fly planes. And they came out with some that was, like, train simulator and then a uh, goat simulator. It's like long haul trucking <laughs> I've simulator. I've always wondered. <laughs> you know? So I'm like, what What else could there be? Goat simulator, by the way, is really freaking cool. Like your tongue can grab things and fling them around. You're like a super powered goat that flies through the air on trampolines. Yeah, and it's got a crazy physics engine. And you can My favorite. Like... Oh, sorry. No, go ahead. My favorite one that you guys came up with was the Hope Simulator. <laughs> yeah. That's... That was mine. Yeah. Fucking hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. Did you did you holler the ones that we had so far? On no, there? no. Oh, yeah. So Sorry, go we on. have a Hope Simulator, Pool of Marbles on a Giant Speaker Simulator. That, <laughs> that would be fun. That <laughs> was from a gum commercial. Do you guys remember Seven Gum? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Those commercials were intense, man. Holla, 90s kids. Uh, being Accepted Simulator. <laughs> Nose Picking Simulator. World where there are flying whale simulator. Like, you're still just a person walking around, but there's just flying whales. I like yeah. it. Yeah. It's a great AR application, I think. I'd, I'd want a special AR goggles oh, just to yeah. get flying whales. There should whales be a simulator for everything. It would be yeah. cool to have for people to have access to that perspective, as silly as that sounds. It's uh, healthy, though, anything. you think, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry, go on. I have one, too, so. Uh, you don't actually live in a capitalist hellhole simulator? Yes. Definitely one of Greg's. Amorphous blob <laughs> simulator? This thing would be kind of fun. Like, what's it like to be an amorphous blob just blobbing around? Uh, World just like this one, but you actually drink water every day. (laughs) (laughs) And then a Kratom simulator. Yes. Which, I don't know if you just are Kratom. I don't know. And you just go through the process. I can just explain it to you, Greg. (laughs) (laughs) So you get to be mixed with water, and then you get to be drank? Yeah, but you start start as the plant, and then you get harvested and processed. How about? (laughs) Sold, delivered. (laughs) Okay. I like where you're, you're going with this. What about... A religious conduit simulator. Like oh, wait. Like you're actually a prophet? Yeah. yeah. But and you, and you can, you are a conduit, so you can, uh, you can, you can feel 
You can like actually talk to simulated God. Exactly. Dude. I love that. Or like dead people can talk to you, kind of talk through you. You know, kind just of the same thing that preachers do. Only you get to see their legitimacy for your own self. Oh yeah. All right. <laughs> That's really cool. Also, it's kind of... Might prove a thing or two. <clears throat> Probably not going to be the first one to be created. <laughs> right. And how many preachers right now are basically this simulator, if we really want to... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> hey. Well, there's hey. Like... <laughs> <laughs> that, that, hey. <laughs> okay, uh, on, um, we only have one that came in on the Instagram, but it has, like, two halves to it. So, uh, first... Um, shout out to uh, Aries. He was like terminal illness simulator. <laughs> Holy shit. But Tom Gatto had like some dialogue from that. You beat cancer and went back to work at the carpet store. Boo. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's, That's the lame way to We've play We've been trying to get Tom to come on the show. I don't even know if he tunes in, but... Uh... Oh, I totally, I totally see him peeping. Not that I know everyone that Luke's in, but that's one of my favorite people that Chet hollows at us. I know. He always more. has good opinions on the news, and uh, he's fucking hilarious. Hello. Okay. Did you guys have any other ones while I find um, the other oh, ones that uh, happened on Facebook? Oh, what other simulators? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I mean, there's already... Someone put Kyle Jones... Not, not Kyle to Jones. say that just Kyle Jones simulator. <laughs> Kyle Jones, simulator. <laughs> right? That would be sick. Okay, I didn't mean to start. I introduced his suggestion dismissively. That's yeah. why I'm like, oops, sorry, Kyle. But he put the Matrix simulator, but not the video game. But like um, that makes me uh, at first be like, whoa, the like the simulation of the Matrix that's already a simulation. I don't know. I feel like my brain's bleeding from that one a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, I wanted to mock it, and then in the process of processing how I'd mock it, I, I like... I'm still thinking about it. I felt like Because well, was... you'd, be, you'd be, like, convinced you're in the simulation of the Matrix, and then you would wake up and realize you're in the Matrix. And then you wake up from that, and you're like, oh, that was all just to sit like a, a simulation. Okay. Well, yeah, then you're, you're just back at square one there, buddy. So what if you sell this Matrix simulator and then you, you get it, uh, or like you've been saving, you pre-ordered, you finally get to purchase, take home, try the Matrix simulator for the first time, and it's just a VR game where you take pills. It's just like you use the glove <laughs> controller and you grab a pill and put it, and you just have to get it right in your mouth, and it, that's all it, it is. It turns out you're like institutionalized. Just pill-taking simulator. And, and Morpheus <laughs> is just like the, the nurse. Yeah. Take another pill. They're like, oh, red pills. <laughs> Time for your red pill. <laughs> Have a blue one, too. There's no, yep. there's no points. Yep. You just take Time pills. Time for the blue pill. Oh, man, that's great. <laughs> All right, Kyle. You had layers on yours. Okay, you had a couple more in here that I were like mystery, greasy conversation ones because it just posted as greasy. We didn't know which, yeah, one. Yeah. I was, which one of us was it. But it turns out it's great. Check it out. Uh, unpicked Apple Simulator. We were talking about that before the show. Do you just stare at the apples on the tree and you can't pick no, them? No, it's from the perspective of an apple on a tree. Yeah. So you are the apple yeah, on the tree. obviously. But you can't rotate the camera or anything. Yeah. You could only just stare in one direction. And sometimes the wind blows and then you get a little more you of a view. You could fall off. You, just, you can fall off, yeah. There are, uh, That's how you yeah. beat it. You could feel worms going through you. Yeah, you could get munching infected on you, by... Birds munching on you. Worms, yeah. Like after you fall off, uh, at the end of the game, anything goes. You fall off and you roll down the hill, and then you have to try to not get eaten by animals. But there's not actually any controls, <laughs> so you just get eaten by animals. <laughs> it just happens. That's the game. Metamorphosis Simulator. That seems like it takes some patience. Well, at first I was just like Cocoon Simulator, <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. I think it would be. Well, that's another one. Just like I just think it's funny, like these simulators that don't. That aren't exciting, like Train Simulator, where it's like you're just driving a train. Maybe it is interesting, but it's like, you know, just flip some levers, do whatever, you know? Yeah, it really seems like a do whatever in between a lever flip here and there. Yeah. So I just keep imagining, like, simulator games like that that are really popular, but just where you're just in a cocoon for, like, you know, six weeks, and then you turn into a butterfly, and that's the end of the game. <laughs> If, if you, you want, if you want to be a butterfly, you have to get Butterfly Simulator, all right? <laughs> it's an upgrade. It's a, it's a plug-in, yeah. Yeah, DLC. <laughs> a plug-in. 
<laughs> oh man, that's perfect for that education uh, time though, because you can charge ten times as much if the school's paying for it. Yeah, right. Yeah. Just Simulators could really could uh, affect things, um, to say the least. I I have a firm belief that in high school, like to pass high school or college, however you want to go about that, that you should have to like serve in a long-term care facility and in a psych ward for like a certain amount of time. So that'd be a good simulator. I know there's already some mental health simulators for like, you know, schizophrenia or whatever, but I thought they were pretty shitty. Yeah. Even if you were just a receptionist for a while at somewhere like Absolutely. that, just to get some exposure. Like a little, a little, a little forced empathy, if you will. <laughs> yeah. If I didn't have a schizophrenic father, there's so much about, um, so much more well also being like diagnosed bipolar and having anxiety problems just the whole bouquet gave me a lot of experience and reason to learn study up on it as i grew up and it just makes everything a lot easier to understand between yourself and everyone around just have a little bit of basic psych knowledge yeah just have so then some you terms can, at least you could measure yourself like okay well this is an extreme case so here are the attributes i have that relate to this but my case is an extreme or today it is maybe i should try to adjust it <laughs> you know yeah measure yourself having an understanding of terms that give something like validity like oh this is a thing it's not just me being it's not special yeah <laughs> yeah and yes, you can be special in cool ways and not just lost ways another thing i have to like rediscover constantly is that uh your brain just will create thoughts and they aren't always beneficial to you and, and yeah. you are not just, your like, thoughts, thoughts. Yeah, yeah yeah it's a reoccurring and, but conversation sometimes, yeah, yeah you know I it's like it. a constant reminder but people need to be reminded major. that you're not your thoughts it's not someone else those are your thoughts <laughs> no one's talking to you well unless yeah. you're an extreme case that's an arguable thing but the average person like yeah no one's trying to give you a message it's you and it may not be correct and you may have to retrain your thoughts so that it doesn't make you walk off a cliff <laughs> and your actions actually define you you can't judge yourself like, by your thoughts either not to go on and on about this but uh in this day and age with how the how information affects us almost everyone has considered suicide you know so it's normal to consider it and to even go through with it that doesn't mean it's for you <laughs> right. For sure. And also doesn't mean that you need to feel stigma towards talking about it or any other mental thing. The more we talk about it, um, even joke about things with each other, the more they're just on the table. I think like some, some people that I've worked with, I've worked with disabilities most of my life and uh, mental and physical. And the most interesting people I've met were people that had the ailment, but could explain them and recognize it because that puts them in the same intelligence as someone that doesn't have these diagnoses. If not even better, <laughs> because they they've got mechanisms that they've learned that could make them even better than people that never got those mechanisms but still gets the occasional issues because everyone 100% of everyone has some kind of a mental difficulty a handful of times like in can life. you identify your shit or not yeah <laughs> <laughs> boom that's well spoken so I have to also have to holler at Carrie Cowart in the chat Carrie Cowart Carrie what up can't neglect yep. him he's been super supportive of our show hell yeah and it takes this Forever. community. It's a good time to mention all you guys. You just mentioned mention this to one friend. Uh, guys and yeah. gals, holla at your brethren. Tell one other person nearby you that this thing exists, Greasy Conversation, and just start at the most recent yeah. season. And or pop send, in. send Waz your plugs if you have something coming up. Send or, me a plug. You know, ask him about coming on the show if you want to come talk shit. This is, oh, I'm yeah. really, really glad you said both of those things. I don't want to just leave them on the table. I have to remind him. Um, it's totally okay to hit me up about coming on and or tossing me something to holla community style for us and our little family. We can enjoy this cult status and, uh, and with one another. Yeah. Speaking of that, Joe Lawless really contributed a lot to I like to that, that guy. Right? Uh, anything he's into is worth checking out, um, but... He brought it on the simulators. Yeah, yeah he threw a bunch of it in there. Uh, Decision simulator. <laughs> <laughs> no thanks, Joe. <laughs> that, that is so great. The vagueness leaves like a lot to the marketing. Right? Like, page. is it only like just one decision? <laughs> right? right? Like, it's just like a person in a store, like paper or plastic. <laughs> They're like, do you want fries with that? Uh, uh, oh man, I got have Fuck, I, I didn't want fries. Damn it. I gotta, I gotta this is a real over. thing I already go through. <laughs> I know. No, I've already had fries this month. Damn it. <laughs> right. 
Fucking hate this game. Consequences Simulator. Oh, that's mm. a good one. These are all like have really good like applications. It implies that you live a life if you purchase that game where you I'm don't normally our, have consequences. Right? Like, I'm seeing our retirement plan coming together, guys. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta get this off the like, ground. Like just some like like super wealthy like mega billionaire who's never had to deal with anything. He's like, hmm, I wonder. What's it like to have consequences? It's the future of like training people. These instead of like those stupid videos they show you. Yeah, and, uh, like that would make more for, sense, honestly. Unless yeah, it's totally. like CPR, then you really need to do it. But still, you can. <laughs> it's like the right. opposite of Grand Theft Auto Consequences Simulator. <laughs> right. Wait, didn't you say something about your retirement portfolio? Because Joe, Joe <laughs> he also had has. Comment that, but mine was different than how I approach it. But building your retirement portfolio simulator. <laughs> <laughs> portfolio. I just have so many questions about what he meant by that. <laughs> that's hilarious. Oh, man. That's like a, a, some of these pe folks that we've interacted with uh, in the day trading life really should have simulated some of this portfolio <laughs> time first. Oh, <laughs> Damn. It's very true. We got. Uh, top of the food chain simulator I like um, that. Joe if you're tuning in or when you call back I didn't get simulacrum simulator maybe that's well cause like uh, uh, simulacrum is just like it's just kind of like a, an older word for a type of simulation or a, sim <laughs> a simulation of something you know usually oh. it was more, more I, th I think I'm not sure uh, but I think it's like a simulation of an object so you would just like uh so it's like simulator simulator. No, so if you had like a golem, if you made like a golem creature that was like looked like a man. Okay. Like a man bot, you know, of magic, that would be like a, a simulacrum of a man. Oh man. But My... yeah, it's like simulation of a simulated thing. That's one of those that's when the right person, that is the funniest one. Yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> it's super meta. Memory and context simulator. Uh Let's see. Leaving your parents' basement and getting your own place simulator. <laughs> <laughs> wow. This contest got, like, cold. Yeah. <laughs> I had a lot of comments come to mind, but none of them were positive. So I <laughs> All right. All I can tell you is I moved out of the basement at 18, bitches. <laughs> <laughs> <Right>. Forever. <laughs> That's right. Not that if Back you when didn't. that was the thing to do at 18. You right. know, more power to you if you get along with your parents good enough to live with them right now or go back to living with them later or any amount of hanging out with your folks that goes good for you, more power. But, I mean, it is also healthy to get that independence chunk out in life at some, some point. I'm so lucky I was insane that, and just rolled on across the country. Independence simulator. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Isn't it's, it Bob Thornton time? Oh, yeah. It's, uh, it's Bob Thornton time. Crystal time. Not that kind of crystal. No. That's <laughs> Preston. Esquire. Ted Theodore Logan. All right, dicks. I told you to register for the free Aerosmith tickets by clicking on the link for the Radio Vegas Rocks app and then simply register your name and phone number under the VIP tab. To punish you, dicks, I'm going to play Janie's Got a Gun on my hand flute while I explain again how great this contest through Radio Vegas Rocks truly is. This is free airfare, free hotel accommodations, and two VIP tickets on the actual stage. You're on the stage watching Aerosmith play. If one of you dicks win these tickets and you have no one to go with, I'll go with you. I would love to see if an Aerosmith on stage turtle, even if you win. As long as you promise you don't roof in my drink, you don't have sex with my dead corpse, hopefully he doesn't make my my skin into some sort of apparatus he wears around his face, I'll even stay with you. All you have to do is download the Radio Vegas Rocks app and register under the VIP tab of the app to win. Download the Radio Vegas Rocks app right now. Hello, hello, everybody. This is DJ Fade from Faded and Elevated, and I am so excited to talk to you guys about Deluxe Cleaning Service. Yeah, that's right. Miss Blanca Lopez, she is the cat's meow, y'all. She comes to your house. She comes to your office. She comes wherever you need her to go, and she cleans that sucker up like it's never been cleaned before. Yeah, that's right. She will come absolutely anywhere. Wherever you need her, she's there to get Keep you clean and the deluxe way. 
Remember in the beginning, when you first started to build a life for you and your family, you never imagined it would come to this. Instead of living your dreams, you're living with debt. In fact, it's smothering you. Now there's a way you can take back control with one simple call. If you owe $10,000 or more in credit card debt, you qualify to receive a free, no-obligation consultation on how to get rid of that debt for good. Call the Debt Helpline now. We work on your behalf to reduce your debt. We specialize in credit cards, retail store cards, and medical bills. One simple call is all it takes to get the ball rolling to a debt-free life. Stop living with debt and start living your dreams. Call the Debt Helpline now. 800-709-4389. 800-709-4389. That's 800-709-4389. Thirty-nine, thirty-nine Spring Mountain Road in the heart of Chinatown is where you're going to find the Golden Tiki. Can't miss it. The sign is ginormous. That's where you need to go, though. Golden Tiki is the premier tiki destination in Las Vegas, and in fact, the world. It's being rated top tiki bar by many different travel websites and agencies. Articles coming out constantly about the Golden Tiki. So what makes them great? Well, let's just start with the front door. As soon as you walk in, you're taken away to a magical tropical paradise. Walk in and there you go. The music is always pumping in that place. Live music, DJs, the drinks are cold. You can get some Dole Whip. You can get specialty cocktails any night of the week. And let's talk about the slot machines. You feeling lucky? Well, you should because the slot machines down there are always hot. And 30 39 Spring Mountain Road in the heart of Chinatown is where you're going to find the Golden Tiki. This is the Rockin' Cavity Show with Crazy, 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 crazy. Jay. We could teach you some Aussie if you like. I would love to learn. Yeah. Yeah. Right, you're going to say three words. Just say it normally, just an American accent, whatever. Okay. Uh, so you're going to say rise. 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 Yep. Up. 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 And then lights. 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 Any American yes. listening can try this as well. Yeah, you, can, you can try this if you're listening. So you say rise up lights in a row. So does that normal? Like rise up lights. Rise, rise up, up lights. lights. That's how we say razor blades. Like you're rise having a shave. Light. That's yeah. razor, razor blades, blades in lights. perfect That's Australian. razor blades in Australian. <laughs> rise up lights. Razor blades. Razor blades. No, you're trying to say <laughs> it in Australian. Lights. Just say rise Just up say lights. Rise up, light. rise up lights. The Rockin' Comedy Show. Behold... It's Greasy Conversation on Radio Vegas Dot Rocks. We're back. It's occurring. The submarine of news has arrived again. And there's been a crazy thing that fortunately was not actually shooting time. Yeah. We've got opposite of shooting news this time. Yeah. I mean, but this is a, a result of the, I mean, place that we live and how often it happens in Times Square. You know, just normal evening in crowded Times Square. Uh, there was a a motorcycle backfire, and it just sent people into a panic. Uh, they heard, you know, because they hear this loud noise, and, and someone, some 
the people closest, I imagine, assumed it was gunfire. So someone or a few people just shouted, you know, shooter or whatever. And then it just spread through the crowd and everyone started bolting and just like cleared out. It was a. Uh, I'm really glad that. Well, actually, I shouldn't say. Do you know if anyone was hurt in all the I was just gonna tumbling, say, wow. climbing people? I don't, I don't think they mentioned any like major injuries. Um, you know something I accepted recently? I know this is dark to say, but I was talking to my friend Mindy. And, uh, and like she suggested that like we may have that we should like that this is not going to change. It's a thing to be accepted. What do you think about that? Like the world's not going to get magically healed. Pollution's not going to go away. Like all these things we keep talking about is not going to happen. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Well, w what I'd say about that is that uh, if we had said that when we were kids in the 80s, uh, look how inaccurate it would be because we've got amazing treatment for cancer. Uh, AIDS is not a death sentence. Some people have a treatment for cancer. The air, the <laughs> yeah. air pollution situation. Insurance. Yeah, that's a major thing. We're still not full access to everybody, tragically. But uh, another major thing is the air pollution situation in California. There were air advisories that were part of the weather, and frequently it would be unsafe to go outside. They, the actual news would tell you to stay inside because of the air pollution throughout all of Southern California. And that's not the case at all anymore. It's drastically better. Um, the the uh, amount of serial killers has gone down. Now, I know yeah. mass shooters kill more people than serial killers, but with mass shooters becoming more popular, people for the, the type of person that would become a serial killer seems like they uh, aren't arising or choosing to do that as much as they used to. Uh, so I'd like to think that social trends could change on this enough too. Already for one reason or another, um, things like that haven't risen in proportion to population and just the fact that there's more humans on the earth. Um, if we had as many serial killers as uh, we did in the 80s with how many more humans we have, there would be a, a, a seeming epidemic of that, I believe. Yeah, yeah, totally. I mean, the mass shooting thing, it's, it's a cultural issue as much as it is about like access to guns and that and it's you know. it's suspiciously not evenly distributed worldwide so yeah. that's another sign that i think uh there's we're destined to well never lose that as a thing that could happen it doesn't have it be less uh epidemic less hip, yeah less hip for sure like <laughs> i i am of the opinion that like some things are too far gone or they're just too big of problems and we're going to solve many time soon but i'm trying to i'm trying very hard to be less cynical about everything because uh, yeah. that's just like my default state but i do have hope that like i mean pe if enough people get fucking pissed off enough i mean i think there's societal things that america really has to catch up on uh, s such yeah, as sure. uh treating people that otherwise are just going to jail then they really need psychological treatment and how much that works in uh countries like uh scandinavia belgium uh places where it <clears throat> Excuse me. The social infrastructure is so much better at uh, so strengthening society, so that people aren't as alienated, people aren't aren't pushed to crime as much. Mm -hmm. Whereas we have a known issue with uh, offenders getting locked up and being uh, uh, through some computer algorithm thought that they'll have higher recidivism and uh, then just getting extra crime lessons in jail and not seeing a way out, not seeing alternatives in their neighborhood of uh, things they can do for not just hobbies, but future careers. Yeah, when you have like limited paths. options. Limited yeah. options, Like exactly. when you get out, yeah. When we have these many things wrong with society, I think it's, it's silly to think that these other more glaring issues that affect all of us in every class uh, aren't going to get better when we help the lower classes succeed. Yeah, for sure. It's part of why it's towns that it used to be ghettos have been um, uh, gen, what's... I'm spacing on the word where like gentrified. It's gentrified. There's problems with gentrification pushing out lower class people, and they do need homes. But for what hasn't gone wrong uh, on this whole gentrification thing, you still have areas that used to be crime ridden that are really functional now. That's a, a net good, even if there's ways that have ha it's happened where it hasn't been for the best. No one can argue that we still need crimey people or crimey parts of town. Um, that, that could be improved, get economically better, and there's got to be uh, more people succeeding in these areas than there are people pushed out that 
yeah, it's I, you know, yeah, it's really one of those saying, yeah. things where I like I don't want to speak so highly of gentrification. I know there's things that have gone really wrong. Yeah, people that have been kicked to the curb, but it's, every hundred years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so well. I think there's been a net improvement on in most cities where stuff like that's gone down. But then there's also a lot of cities that have just been shipping their homeless people to another city, <laughs> right. just shuffling them around. That's a whole nother rabbit hole of injustice. But you know, it's, there was like some, I don't know if it was in LA or some other part of California, but there was actually this um, organization that just started building, and they've done this other states too, um, just started building houses for homeless people and then give them let them stay there so they like have a place to come to without worrying and then mm. they can like take showers and start to get back on their feet and have that like just having a place is like a huge huge step up into like turning that whole situation around um it really is even an apartment even an apartment for a few minutes uh, uh, the idea of halfway houses uh, but like done right whatever that means i'm no expert on any of this but a lot of people are quick to say well, if they trash their life, they're going to trash this place you give them. And I think that's a really unfair general generalization. We need to take risks on some people trashing some stuff to give the majority of people a chance yeah. that they'll take. And have other like support structures. In the, and it's not just like, here you go, you have a place to live forever. But yeah, they, they should did be. This. Here's a job that you can try. Here's another job if that doesn't yeah, work. Yeah, and then there's avenues to get jobs and stuff. To but, keep uh, this place, you have to keep trying that. But what's really funny is the reason they started doing this is because they calculated the average cost of a homeless person on the city, on the city or state economy, and it actually costs them more to just have homeless people living on the streets because they would get arrested. That costs taxpayer money. Healthcare. Uh, that healthcare. I mean, all that stuff. Um, so it was actually just cheaper to like build houses for homeless people to stay in. Yeah. And it's better for everyone because that gets them back into uh, the economy, gets them back on their feet, you know, turns them into uh, hopefully a and, more fulfilled human being. And that just shows how crazy it is, how much uh, money we're wasting when we have uh, this all this private health care when... Uh, these homeless people and what they need in medical care from being uh, stuck outside uh, and getting extra health problems that they then have to have treated at the ER uh, on the government's dime or billed to them in a way they can never pay, this health care would be a fraction as much if they had preventative health care in the first place yeah, in right. a sanitary situation to the point where the cost of building a whole house for a person or right. a small it's like family... Cheaper. Yeah, it's like a house amount of money that these people need in um, medical care, suffering they've had to go through that could have been prevented just giving them this chance in the first place. It's yeah. just money getting spent in completely the wrong order. Right. That's that's That seems to be the crux of the issue. And it all comes issues. to people not trusting it. There's so much distrust in these strangers that whatever help or something they're getting, they're going to squander it or yeah, not use it the right way. Which goes like, back... Which goes back to a lack of empathy. Yeah. I think, but also it might be more telling about the people who think that, that like everyone's trying to rip off the system. Because mm -hmm. if you think everyone's trying to do that, do you think you would do that if you were put in that situation? Yeah. Is that you your know? whole thought is that that's how you would play it? Like, Cause <laughs> not like some people just want to, you know. Yeah. Some people just want to. Honest the, days work and like have a place to live and do a few things they enjoy and they're not trying to like. Yeah. So it's obvious that life off. isn't fair. And these same people that are all concerned about this help for these people being fair or that they work hard enough to deserve it are the same people that started with tons of opportunities that they were born into. Right. Yeah. Uh, they probably had a vehicle. They probably had a home growing up uh, to start their first job. And there's people that don't have those situations. And the people that did get all kinds of opportunities to get started are the first to to judge how someone else will use an opportunity. Right. Yeah. And it gets, it's, it's kind of easy too, especially just with the way the media is to get sucked in, into this kind of mindset. Like there's just groups of people out here that are just like, can everyone's conniving and, you know, trying to rip people off and like, but yeah. it's, it's really like, what do you really see when you go outside? And if you don't, you should go outside once in a while, <laughs> you know, but uh, yeah, it's, you know, I mean, a lot, lot to unpack there super
complicated societal issues. Yeah, it's easy to get in a rant bubble there. So I apologize for getting no, no, a little it's... activated, everybody. <laughs> right? <laughs> Someone activated was. We got to show them. No. Yeah, it's not like I know what I'm doing as far as how to implement any of this. I'm just like. No, yeah, that's exactly. <laughs> it's, compl- it's good. To, but the thing is also, we need to like talk about it. It's More true. people Very need true. to and not be afraid to talk about it. Because, like, you know, just saying, like, oh, that problem's just a problem. <laughs> I mean, then nothing's ever going to happen. But, all right. Anyway. It's, it's no hedgehog sex. <laughs> 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 all right. Should we do. So we got. One more break coming up in the immediate. How about a positive story? A little nice, heartwarming story of Britain's longest married couple celebrates 80 years. Ah, uh, yeah. Well, let's have a little sweetness on the tail end of this segment. Uh, Yo, props to them, 80 man. 80 years. 80 years, dog. Talk about a simulation. Yo. <laughs> I don't know what that's like because, yeah. I don't know. I couldn't imagine that. I don't know. I just am not. I don't think I'm one of those people. I want to ask if it's that. like luck or if they, it's luck. <laughs> Red meat and wine. Well, just like living that long. <laughs> right. Hard enough. I'd be like, I'm seeing way too much. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> like if you, after you get to, to a certain point, like do you think there's just like, I mean, outside of like something that's like really grievous like you know having a a long affair on someone or you know something like that but just like normal shit that would normally like annoy you about a partner do you think there's ever a point where there's just like no it doesn't matter like you've seen too much oh for sure there's no there's no straw gonna break that camel's back it's whatever you know i think that happened way before 80 years and it's great yeah yeah (laughs) I, i imagine so i'm just like that's the place that's the place to get to in my opinion yeah right yeah I it's think like nothing's a big deal. If yeah. you start with someone that doesn't push any of the major buttons, then anything else that pops up later, you're like, oh, it's with intolerances. Yeah, yeah. It's like, and for sure, um, it's. You can't tell somebody how to live their life. Yeah. Even if you want to, it's not going to work out that way. Yeah, for sure. That's such a good way of putting what I was thinking that, like, if people feel like they have freedom and they're choosing their partner all the time, it's. So much feels like you're under, you don't feel trapped. Resentment yeah. comes from being ordered. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it says these Jack and Joan have not had a night apart well, let me since see the wedding picture. World War II. Oh, let me go back to the wedding picture. Who had de- who got dementia first? That's what I want to know. <laughs> right? Like, yo, 100 and 102 years old. Are they? Damn, my grandma Angelina lived to be 99. Dang. That's that's hard. I know, man. and I was named after her, so I kind of have high hopes, but I'm not really sure if I want to go that far. <laughs> yeah, I'm no. not really sure if I want to go that far. I do far. know exactly how she ate in her lifestyle, and I've pretty much fucked that up already. But <laughs> yeah, because at, at some point, I'm just gonna like, I'm just gonna have enough. You know, I'm just gonna want like a suicide booth, and I'm be like, you know what? I know, right? I've lived enough. Yeah. And that's it. I would really like to see 70, but like, I know that like. It's important to envision things if you really want to go there. But I used to think I'd like to see 60. So now I'm at 70. And if I could go to 70, I would be very thankful. Yeah. I have to say one more lifetime from where I'm at. Exactly. Yeah. You guys talking about checking out and stuff. I feel like if I wants to be around till 110 and have someone taking care of him. I'm like, you're crazy. (laughs) If, If the person taking care of me is paid well and I can like look at cool stuff. I, I want to just see more gadgets and see stuff get invented, see people land on other planets. Plus, I'll need someone to take care of me because I'll have dementia for sure. <laughs> oh, you know what would be great, though, is like when you get that old and you can't really do a lot, you can just go to VR time. That's what yeah. I want. That's what I'm talking about. My like shrooms VR, in VR. The bed has a toilet in it. I just get rolled around and see, wiped down. I just don't want to live that way at all. <laughs> if I'm VR and if I'm squirming in my little old bed and... Right. <laughs> <laughs> no. I will choke so, you. No, nah, I'd like to see you try squirm on over. Oh, I'll forget what I'm doing halfway through. Right. Like, are we making check- love? Is this love right now? <laughs> I, I wouldn't just like check out, but I just feel like I have that personality where like, if I'm like 70, 75 and just something happens, it's just gonna be that one thing I'm not in the mood for. 
and be like, yep, that's it. Yeah. yeah. Just beeline to the suicide booth. That's how I feel like if I got the dementia to the point where Having I a choice do. is really an interesting way to go. Yeah, that. for sure. It definitely makes you look at life differently if you had the opportunity to decide that. If uh, I can't do puzzles peacefully. anymore, if I, if I can't solve, do like problem solving for sport kind of thing mm -hmm. then I feel like the dimension's really going to set in I'm not going to be really processing or functioning anymore I'm hoping to be gardening a lot of weed and making my own Rick Simpson oil around that time if yeah. I am here <laughs> yeah. making my own oil yeah. is high on my list for in the next five years I got really excited about doing that sound to it I was <laughs> so into that Hey, Michael Gagliano if you don't know Mad Mike he's got the show right after ours and it's a good time to plug him a little bit because he suggests that these old people probably farmed their own pickles. Which is like, it seems kind of left field, but that's Mike. He's a pickle farmer himself. She al he also assumes that she's got to be good at hopscotch. Well, <laughs> he has she a has theory. look on her face. Yeah, the, the hopscotch loving look. Yeah. She has a lot of hair. I'm surprised. I think yeah, she has she... more than I do now. <laughs> She used, to, she used to throw a mean hopscotch back in the day. Yeah. Mad Mike says if you hopscotch young, you live a long time. I mean, why is she wearing a watch, though? What kind of time is she tracking, though? <laughs> Never mind. Don't, don't answer that. Uh, there, there's not even any, like, hands on the watch. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Remember to forget. So when he's 90, he wants to buy an electric scooter and ride it off the Grand Canyon. That's his move. Nice. I, I wouldn't want the tumble. Think? Yeah, I, I could go for that. Little little evil Knievel glory before you go out yeah I, I just feel like the electric scooter wouldn't get the distance it's definitely a bit being in the moment thing because you wouldn't have any memory of it so at least the golf cart so you can get some travel out there yeah i just you know what you got to go for the full knievel experience you got to get the whole outfit you know the helmet the bike if dirt you're gonna, bike if yeah you're gonna go out that's right you know evil knievel style <laughs> you got to go all the way but you, you know? know the what is what is that andy war andy warhol um Waiting for something makes it more exciting. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> just, just like, oh man, I've been waiting my entire life for this. <laughs> yeah, finally gonna do it's it. Time. Finally yeah. gonna jump over the Grand Canyon. <laughs> over. <laughs> <laughs> One try. <laughs> First try. <laughs> <laughs> no warm up. Count me off. <laughs> so yeah, you got you. You folks have to stay tuned on Radio Vegas Rocks. You can also catch the video uh, of the show that's on after ours, Two Clueless Dudes, at YouTube. Just look for Radio Vegas Rocks, all is one word. Help us out on a sub on that fella, and it will let you continue the greasy joy on into two other folks, two other hours. It's the four-hour block of talk that you're in the middle of right now on Radio Vegas. Rocks. You. Is this All a right. good time to, to pay some yeah, Bob Yeah, we got to pay them last ones, man. Well, wait, before sure. you do, Mad Mike insists that we let everyone know that he'll dress up like Elvis and uh, pedal. He'll, he's going to pedal off the Grand Canyon on a big wheel. Nice. Okay. That's his move. <laughs> nice. All right, dicks. I told you to register for the free Aerosmith tickets by clicking on the link for the Radio Vegas Rocks app and then simply register your name and phone number under the VIP tab. To punish you, dicks, I'm going to play Janie's Got a Gun on my hand flute while I explain again how great this contest through Radio Vegas Rocks truly is. This is free airfare, free hotel accommodations, and two VIP tickets on the actual stage. You're on the stage watching Aerosmith play. If one of you dicks win these tickets and you have no one to go with, I'll go with you. I would love to see if an Aerosmith on stage turtle, even if you win. As long as you promise you don't roof in my drink, you don't have sex with my dead corpse, hopefully he doesn't make my, my skin into some sort of apparatus he wears around his face. I'll even stay with you. All you have to do is download the Radio Vegas Rocks app and register under the VIP tab of the app to win. Download the Radio Vegas Rocks app right now. Is your butt a crudely built birdhouse? No. Then why are you sanding it with toilet paper? Dude wipes have aloe vera to protect your sensitive side. <laughs> See? Sensitive. <laughs> Come on, dude. Take it to the hole. 
Let's face it, every once in a while, we all need a little help. A call to the bullpen. Well, ladies and gentlemen, have I got a product for you. Rick Knucklecock here to tell you about an exciting new product called Spunk Lube. Yes, Spunk Lube, the all-water soluble lubricant that'll help you perform in the bedroom. Yes, Spunk Lube. You can use it to loosen pickle jars, play a game of hide the pickle. Hide the pickle. Use it to grease your ball bearings. Do you have a squeaky back door? Squeaky. Need to glaze a ham? Or how about frost a donut? Frost a donut. Yes, Spunk Lube. And boy, do I have an offer for you. If you call now and mention Radio Vegas Dot Rocks and order three jars of Spunk Lube, you get two for free. They often say two's a crowd, but three's a party. Spunk Lube. Visit us at spunklube.com. Ah, that's the sound most people make when they leave Pinches Tacos. Why is that? Because Pinches Tacos prides themselves in making every location unique, but give every location the same feel. I'm not talking cookie cutters like those big chain restaurants. They blend into your neighborhood and create a place you want to call your second home. Their doors are always open. Well, at least until 11 o'clock. Their mission is simple. They provide you the best taco experience by using high quality meats and seafood fresh garden vegetables handmade tortillas and high quality artisan breads they could have made it complicated but they chose not to why because they found through experience that keeping things simple is a good recipe for success and happiness it's also a good recipe for a pretty tasty finches taco According to Spanish language Stack Exchange, we always use it as an insult enhancer and can turn almost any curse word into a really rude one. Pinche pendejo, pendeja equals f asshole. Now they have six locations, two right here in Las Vegas. Come in, find out why we love them so much. Check them out on Facebook or visit the website, pinchestacos.com, for a location nearest you. Oh, that was the last one. I thought you meant this next one. Oh, <laughs> Imagine no. that one. The My last bad. One. Folks, you're listening to and Greasy Conversation, the talk show, the greasiest of conversations on Radio Vegas. Dot rocks. Those folks you just heard paying the Bob Thorntons, you know, dial one of those numbers up. Maybe talk about a little debt consolidation. Because if you just have a moment with them, then they throw us some of this keeping the lights on uh moolah and it's it's good for everybody I, w- I was thinking when i was coming over here what if instead of like collections and when was when a bill goes into collections they just send actors named bill or billy to come uh collect the money from you so you <laughs> have like billy bob thornton show up to your house but hey man i went into collections no, he's like, you got you to gotta pay that fucking bill, right? <laughs> he's like, just give me the fucking money, and I'll go so I don't have to come in and start fucking shit up. All right, man? <laughs> all right. Just celebrity extortion, celebrity loan sharks. Celebrity collections. Celebrity loan sh- Yeah, celebrity collections. Oh, man. So this bill, I hadn't paid it in a couple months, and it went into collections, but they're using celebrity collections agency. <laughs> So on one hand, there's an interest rate, and I, I, they're not settling, so I've got to pay this amount. But I got to meet Harrison Ford. But it's so cool. But they're not, but they're not getting, giving autographs. They're coming to get money from you, and if they don't get the money, they're going to beat the shit out of you. But I got to get beaten up by Harrison Ford. Mm. Hold on, hold on. Let, let me let me take let me get a picture of this, Harrison. Yeah. We got to have your roommate take a picture doing the beating. Yeah. Hey, can you can you punch me in the face again? I want to get a good one. Celebrity collections, <laughs> dude. All right, so this was this is a uh, it was a study done by a professor at Penn State, professor of psychology Janet Swim, Janet K. Swim, uh, and basically it boils down to that people decide, uh, or I don't know how to put it. Basically, like when choosing to recycle, um, certain people will not choose to do that because they think it will make them appear gay to other people. 
So just the act of recycling has some homosexual connotations to Good it Lord. in their mind. Even when like no one's around watching them recycle or anything, they're just like, man, this yeah, is like who up knows my... who recycles in the first place, right? <laughs> like, dude, who knows if anyone else recycles unless you tell someone like I recycle or they have a recycle bin, and, and like front of their house. I yeah. mean, I, I, weak ass motherfuckers, right? That's what I thought. I was like, who? Who even who cares? cares? Yeah, these yeah. are the same people that uh, will dig into a fashion trend as soon as it gets a certain amount uh, pr- proliferated and it'll be a fashion trend that was created by gay people yet they'll still worry about this like all the Ed Hardy in people in this fucking and... day and age <laughs> <laughs> remember yeah. when all the clothes were just like covered in like falcons and broken stuff it looked like ink splotches everywhere it was just like really messy art stuff yeah and you'd have these super tough dudes dressing to like what now looks that looks really effeminate now <laughs> <laughs> it, there's always these trends so it's like oh I don't want people thinking I'm gay until it's hip enough yeah, so it's right. like what we need is to make recycling more gay because if we make recycling gay enough they'll be like well it's, it's fashionable That'll I don't want people thinking hip. they're questioning my sexuality because I'm like pink polos imagine that being your thoughts <laughs> I know that's why I was like yeah. it imagine just if those were my thoughts time. I'd be like I gotta do something about this it boggled me man I was like I can't I couldn't imagine too uh, much time on my just worrying head. about that. And then Waz was like, "What'd you say, Waz? Changing your phone screen?" Oh, oh, oh yeah, I forgot. I put that in the notes because I, I there. So we we're you you mentioned <laughs> uh, Ange knows. That's, yeah. yeah. So no, you mentioned the idea of that your phone screen like my, insinuating that you're gay. Well, it, it yeah, got no. me hit on. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah I, I mean, it was it wasn't insinuating, but it was accidentally dog whistling. So it was like this beautiful rainbow that I took a picture of and was really impressed with, and it made me happy. And I put it as my lock screen, and I was uh, picking up food at this Thai place, and this guy followed me out. Nice fella, we chatted. Uh, he was just lonely, but it, it, like he was like, "Darn it, I keep doing that," or something. Like, don't hit on your, don't be hard on yourself. You just like artists. Like it was like the second time that he accidentally hit on someone that was straight. He just got like a bad cue off of it. But I'm like, I probably throw off all kinds of bad cues on this. I'm an artist. I don't care if I, I come off hello flamey. Um, I'm over Sherry and it'll never yeah. change. <laughs> <laughs> but so the, Greg put in there, like imagine uh, doing anything different with your life because people would might think you're gay or not. And I was like, oh, I do have to admit I had to change my lock screen. <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, I see that's a, you know. I mean, that might I didn't be a one-off have to. situation. Yeah. It was just a little bit too much attention. But I mean, not recycling materials. No, I was Boys. recycling my lock screen. <laughs> Boys, but the thing Denial is, denial on so many levels. Women, women will do this too. So it really matters how the person thinks about sexuality in general and what behaviors. And what hitting on you means to them. Yeah. <laughs> right. And yeah. like what behavior is hitting on them means to them. Yeah. Attached to that, so it's it's pretty interesting but also kind of bizarre that yeah. these stock photos about it too though it's just people <laughs> picking Are up garbage All right. yeah what? i know right yep. some kind of generic tree club biodegradable bags apparently nice <laughs> this means that someone went to the the expense of buying matching green t-shirts with like stock clip art <laughs> and like they'll never wear it them. again no just for this stock photo <laughs> this kind of looks like them. a clover <laughs> Oh man, the next show, Mad Mike and the Hank, they gotta pet the dogs if they're coming in. <laughs> gotta give the dogs some petting. Gotta, especially Peanut, he just needs to smell your hand a second. Anyway. Intimidating. intimidating. <laughs> all right. Little so fella. This is, you know, with all the uh, security breaches yes. by large companies all over the place. And I found out more on like that Equifax thing. Like it turns out, like, it was the settlement was kind of screwy so like they're trying to discourage people from collecting at all really the ftc is yeah and it's it's there's i'll, I'll dive in that so I'll, I'll follow up next week but i did hear a rumor that even the 250 i think it was that we signed up for uh if we uh, uh got a, i i got approved that's the thing you got to go to the site and see if you qualify for yeah. the equifax settlement but it can tell you immediately and you can apply right then but yeah i heard that there's suspicion about whether or not we, any of us People are going to get, get that yeah because they're probably going to try to weasel out of it there's already a lot of pressure to just get free credit monitoring instead 
But I went off last episode about how stupid it is to trust them with your credit card. Yeah, monitoring. for sure. When there's free services for that, and like they obviously aren't doing a good job of even keeping track of your credit uh, securely. Yeah. So this time it was an app that was designed for people to find partners for threesomes. Okay. Good app for people who are into that. You know, if you're into it, whatever. But they had a uh, leak and exposed all the users or a bunch of users data and one set of the data is locations okay so like where their phones are and, and uh at the times they use this app i guess is it me or is it really hairy on top of dc <laughs> yeah well that's the thing that they dove I mean, it that's a, it, you keep going deeper and you're like oh there's all this you know around dc there's hell of them and like, then there's one town over there there's one <laughs> there's one flag right water. on the white house and there's one flag right on the Supreme Court. <laughs> Shit. Which is surprise. Like, surprise. Yeah, right. But it's not funny. that it's a problem, but yeah, because are not they really, of age? That's my only fucking yeah, question. Yeah, because it's like yeah. no one cares what you do in the bedroom as long as everyone says yes, you know. That, Unless you're incredible. a super hypocrite and you're uh, uh, a legislature that's um, actively fighting against what people do in their bedrooms you're one of these people that's that's super hypocritical yeah they, totally time to get shut down because of your that. own tightly wound issues yeah <laughs> yeah but it's it's just i don't know it's funny and i think it would also depend and it's like it's just someone in the white house so like someone who works there probably uses this app big whoop but it's just funny because you know depending on like who the president is i think we would take it differently too right like if it was bill clinton back in the day he'd be like oh yeah no shit you know, yeah. well, I, I think with this president, it's, kind of too, a, like, it's yeah. a fun leak right there. It well, is fun. No, with this president, you have to ask how much you paid him. <laughs> That's the problem. <laughs> yeah, we're past this happening. Now it's just yeah. like misappropriation of funds. Right. <laughs> and then there's one in the Supreme Court. So it's like, which one of the old uh, justices? Oh, that would be weird if people at your work knew. Yeah, that would Especially, be. Especially, I mean, there's a lot of levels that this could be weird because of how they could, could it could cause people to perceive you differently. But hell, you're going to get them out of the way, so that's good, I guess. <laughs> yeah, but I, I mean, guess you might get some new offers. You're probably going to get a lot of offers. Right. <laughs> that's what I was going to say. Everyone's going to throw their bucket list at you. But, like, I would actually like if we lived in a society where, like, if, if like, legislators or, or a president got, like, caught on these apps, it wasn't a big deal. Like, yeah. Hey, good for you, man. Can yeah. we just get over that fucking hump and on to the next one? Yeah, right. I know. <laughs> Seriously, just shouldn't be. Like, who cares, anymore. dude? It's crazy what people are willing to focus on. Yeah, it whole. really is. All right. Resist. <laughs> Try to. Um, then there was some some cool space news. We discovered some or astronomers, the Royal We. I'll just take a little bit of that credit. Which, wait, <laughs> uh, you should, though, because this whole uh, way of speaking with, like, they came up with this. Did you hear what they did? Uh, is really sets up in all of our minds a separation between ourselves and the scientists or the people coming up with things. When really, especially in America, when we're not uh, factory workers anymore, we need to all be inventors and all be scientists and all think that way. Because without this country being a hub of art and design and a hub of science and progress and new technology and new advancements, we've got nothing. We can't be a labor hub anymore. It's over. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so the royal we, we are all scientists now. Yeah. I, I worked on we this personally. We came up with this as people. Yeah. Um, but so we just discovered some new, uh, well, they're not new. They're really old galaxies uh, that formed within the first two billion years of the universe and we just previously weren't able to see them because they were so far away um, so yeah yeah we're doing it we're able to do that it's always cool like to just dig deeper and farther uh, out and back best subject going <laughs> yeah for sure out no I love back. space news but we could we could totally be like a space news nerd show but you know, so much funny shit happens. Yeah, totally. At least the chunk. We definitely. Are I wasn't on that. comparing it. No, 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 I know. I I know. Just, yeah. Minimum fifteen percent. Space, into space news. is my favorite game. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah, space I mean, simulator. People don't realize how recently we discovered planets for sure. 
like we assumed they were always around these other stars we looked at, but actually confirming that they're there and that there's other earthy ones, that's just in the last couple years of going over that data. So it's dramatic what a cusp we are on right now that I feel like isn't celebrated enough. The fact that we've really confirmed some things we've been assuming about space. So that means a lot of other things we've been assuming, such as uh, the possibility of uh, a light speed capable entity eventually contacting us or data from far away, at least the speed of light making its way to us. And even things like folding space or traveling on another dimension mm -hmm. wormhole style. I don't think wormholes are the only way that space can be folded in a way that you go from one way to another. And when you're talking about other dimensions being something you can travel through, uh, like that the wormhole doesn't seem like the only yeah, yeah, I know what you're saying. way two dimensions. If you can go and move so something in one dimension, yeah. just slide over is what I was trying to say. Thank you. Just slide. I've got too much time. Well, it's like it's it's crazy now too, and I I try to remind myself of this often to just kind of like be grounded, I guess. But it wasn't it was in like nineteen like twenty eight or something when Hubble uh, built the telescope and then discovered that there was like other galaxies and that yeah. we were just it, like we weren't the only thing in space. And then now like the universe is so unimaginably vast that like. It's just insane. And to think that that wasn't confirmed before Hubble, it was just assumed. And these yeah. things that seem like, oh, people always knew that. Like, no, we were little kids when that was first confirmed. It's amazing. Like, we lived for that. We lived during that. Yeah, just how much, like, knowledge about space is uh, common knowledge now, but just even if it's a, a lot of it's really recent. But it, it does get, like, absorbed into the uh, kind of mass consciousness pretty quick being able to land rockets too while we're on it a rocket yeah. landing finally rockets land that just seems like such an obvious step we had to get through a reusable spacecraft like the whole uh, throwing an airplane away every time you fly it was not gonna get us off this planet and we really do need a backup a place to stash some humans for what could go wrong sure. with this planet yeah i'm, I'm trying to yeah, I'm trying to get on another planet or a space station or something, man. Japan's going to get us on an asteroid before long, at least a mining colony. Shit, I'm going. With all the people getting ready to mine on the moon, hey, the asteroid belt has planetoids the size of Pluto in it. Yeah, for sure. Taken for granted. All right, speaking of rockets, oh, we got our good buddy, Mad Mike Hughes. A different Mad Mike. Yeah self-taught rocketeer and a flat earth conspiracy theorist how is the combination possible will once again <laughs> i remember hearing about this like probably uh i don't know six eight months ago is this in the dock or did you pull up this separately i just pulled it up okay, basically so um so he's gonna attempt to launch himself again uh in a steam-powered rocket oh. on August 11th in the Mojave Desert. Wait, himself in a steam-powered, like into the air on steam yes. with his body. Are we going? He's planning. We should. He's we'll planning see someone die. On shooting himself uh, 5,000 feet. I'm calling his bluff. Before parachuting back to the ground. And seems I like guess you'd see the curve of the earth at that point. Yeah, yeah. Like, just ride a plane, buddy. Like, what? what I know. Point? It looks really dang curvy in an airplane. I was thinking about the other day. I was like, well, this horizon doesn't look flat, though. Yeah, it just, uh, you know, <laughs> I just, but this is, the stunt is being sponsored by uh, a commitment-free dating app. <laughs> not, they're, not, not, they're not already commitment-free. <laughs> right, you know what I mean? Like, it's not saying which one. No, it just so, says a commitment. Uh, let me, let me check. Commitment-free emphasis. Is that, is that supposed to be like reverse psychology or some shit? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, this one's, oh, that's a move. dude, this Shakes is, you in. this is great. It's just called HUD. Oh. H U D. Like Pud, but Hud. And it's, I'll see you on Hud. No, but it's great. This is, it's the peep the app for people who want the eggplant emoji, but not <laughs> the diamond ring emoji. <laughs> Fucking great, brilliant. Because both of those are it. exactly what a relationship's all about. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. This, yeah this those are the only two app. things involved in people having it's a relationship. A, between yeah, them. it's just the hookup app, but it's just funny to like use the. 
Being in a relationship, plant. I interact with so fewer eggplants and rings than everything else a life can <laughs> a life can be. Right? People, good or bad. people just showing up to like dates and shit with eggplants. Like, <laughs> I don't think that's you get the it. new thing. You just like give. <laughs> dude, give Have you ever thought eggplants. of this or this? <laughs> right. you, Man. No, you you bring this the eggplant and the diamond ring. Like, so uh, which is it, huh? Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's why I always bring a diamond ring to my first date when I first yeah, date yeah. someone. <laughs> so it's just handled. And then you just like propose, just <laughs> like <laughs> just, no. just trying to cut to the chase here. No, just be like, okay, I just want, I just, I just had to see how that felt, you know. I just, just like yeah. to get that out of the way, if, you know. If that's not a real possibility, you know, just try to gauge, you know. Yeah, we have to practice this part and do it over and over again. It's the most important thing that happens in your life. You just proposed to right. me with an eggplant. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, dude. To be fair, I had the eggplant carved into a ring shape. <laughs> Difficult. Yeah, it didn't the first couple didn't hold up too well. It's yeah. like it really spreads the fingers apart. It's very thick. Just man. How boring endless, and classic. Endless joy. <laughs> How boringly classic. <laughs> How drab. Just I mean what are they should just make dating apps that just are like two random things. Just like for Do you own a Dalmatian and also a four bedroom house? We've got the da- dating app for you. <laughs> right. Has, your, for has pe- your menage a trois been leaked recently? <laughs> <laughs> for people who want the hedgehog, but not the hedge. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Amateur rocket engineers, we've got the dating app for you. <laughs> Meet each other. Just cause like just just meeting someone when there's only like one connection initially is like <laughs> yeah. worth it. Just like that'll work out always. Well, that's seriously a move for really major hobbies. Like if you're really into a thing. Yeah, 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 yeah totally. That's a great, great place to meet other people. At least that's going on with them. Yeah, yeah, especially if it's like a main hobby that is like, you know. They're not going to judge how much time you spend painting your miniature figurines if they've got their figurines piled up getting painted in the, in the other corner. For the Emperor, man. <laughs> Warhammer you're, 40k. You're Warhammer. Yeah, I was just about to make a Warhammer joke. <laughs> Not to call him out, but uh, Mike, Mad Mike from Two Clueless Dudes, the show you should listen to after this show. He's one of those figurine painters. Dude, no, no, like I've wanted to do that since I was a kid, but it, it's Warhammer is like prohibitively expensive, <laughs> and I'm broke. What if you 3D print your figures and then paint them? That's supposedly the hack. Yeah, There's yeah, so yeah. many Warhammer people that are 3D but printer owners. Dude, like, some of those figures, the painting is, like, fucking immaculate and amazing, so. Well, you're just going to do it over again anyway. Just paint over it. Yeah, yeah, you can just paint over it, but it's, it's legit. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you're going to paint it anyway, 3D printer time. Shout out to Shapeways. Send out your thing. to Put your own face on it. <laughs> be sick. <laughs> Just an arm, just like a little army of miniatures. Just everyone has your face. Well, that's why I haven't gotten into that game or really any other like that. Like, yeah. They seem cool. Like, oh, it's something I want to sit down and enjoy with some friends. Maybe when I have some more free time, looks cool. But I mean, if they all had my face, I'm there every Wednesday. <laughs> We're setting a date. Wednesday's game nights. Yeah. Hell yeah. I love it. Sweet. All right. Uh, that wraps her up. Yeah. That's where we're. Uh, anything last you want to holla, Ange? Uh, um, before we. Next Saturday, August 17th, 8 p.m., come to Rebar for the Stella Art Throwdown. That's it. Sweet. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so that's just how we say goodbye. Oh, no, that's like we usually say goodbye this way. There we go. That's got that conclusion feeling yeah, you know and love. That's, we're concluded. So now it's officially it's signing off, but it doesn't have to end. You can check out our chat notes, and uh, earlier in the week we're going to have – new news to check out before the episode so you can start hollowing hollowing and start talking to us in comments and stuff about the news that we build up each week before the episode even happens so stay yeah. tuned follow along and of course check out other shows on radiovegas.rocks on the schedules page check out that schedule page and really check out what's live because it's always growing it's always awesome <laughs> Bye.